Last time on Tim's YouTube. Everyone, we have the one, the only, Kyle He Bear. I'm here. I'm here, everybody. Hi. And everyone knows him as the narrator from Dragon Ball Z. And some of you girls may know him as Aizen. That's right. So tell me, Renji, does Rukia deserve to die? No. (laughs) No. Okay. (laughs) Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Fight you? No. I want to kill you. Yeah, I'm Gohan, Kiba on Naruto, Ryu on Street Fighter, Kamina on Gurren Lagann. Oh my gosh. I'm a lot of... A lot of, lot of people over the course of the past 22 years. Oh, and uh, one of my favorite roles is actually one that you don't speak in very much is Berserker from Fate Zero. Oh, yeah. The guy who, for most of his first appearance, was just like, ah! like, what's your favorite line? Oh, you know, the one where he just, ah! <laughs> I think he only has like two lines out of the entire franchise, you know? He, he got serious there at the end and he actually spoke. So that's good. True that. Um, yeah. And lately, the past couple of years, I got uh, My Hero Academia as Fat Gum. He had a nice little tiny arc in the show, which was really, really cool. And uh, yeah, over the years, Fire Emblem. Uh, golly, pick a god and pray, Frederick. And uh, I've been in the Pokemon franchise. Dormant again. Pokemon Journeys. Uh, Pokemon Origins. I actually got to voice a younger uh, Professor Oak. Crash your wake on a Pokemon mobile game. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. So do you have a favorite character? Favorite is the next one, you know, because we're all freelance. We don't know where the next job's going to be. No, seriously, Gohan has always been special because it's the one where I started. I started big. I started on this huge show. And um, another one that just means pretty much the same because it it got my got me a bucket list thing street fighter ryu got to be in wreck it ralph and um the head of new generation pictures kind of uh nudged his contact with the disney company when wreck it ralph was you know going to come out in a few months and they had the teaser trailer and you could see you know oh there's um there's bison in the the thing or uh zangief it's like hey if you guys have any more street fighter characters i get you access to the dub cast and so they called me and Ruben Langdon in, and we had that little cameo there. And so I was like, oh my God, I didn't have to be a movie star or celebrity to be in a Disney movie. Rock and roll. That Disney T, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it, it feels feels awesome, even though it's like less than 10 seconds, but <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Now, uh honestly, the first role that I was introduced to you to was Gohan, but I also remembered there was another narrator in Dragon Ball Z before you came yeah. along. Now I think his name was Dale Kelly. Whatever happened mm-hmm. to him? That's a good question. I don't know. For whatever reason, he left and Chris Sabat said, you know, I've, I've heard your demo and it sounds like this could be in your ballpark. You want to give it a shot? And I say, like, oh my God, yeah. Because I actually, well, I was a fan of Dragon Ball Z first. It started airing in the States in the US <clears throat> in like 95, you know, the Canadian English dub. The first two sagas just kept airing over and over again before Toonami first dropped. And I would just go around the house like next time. And that was, uh, yeah, Doc Harris, the original, original. And oh, then yeah. Dale Kelly took that over. And then when he left, I took over that. So I was voicing Gohan first. And then I took over as the narrator. And then we finished out Z, went back and did it all uncut. And I got uh, Ox King and Dragon Ball. But that was someone else. I was like Mark Britton and Chris Abbott at some point. So we went back and dubbed all the episodes and, and got consistent cast from beginning to end, which was, uh, this was pretty cool. I mean, if you dig around, it's kind of confusing for Canadian or UK fans because they put the Canadian dub out in a box set and then on Blu-ray and all that. I mean, they don't have 4k, maybe they will one day Then Blu-ray. Yeah. You can get the Funimation dub from Texas. And it's like, which version do you have? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's there's been so many releases, and then Dragon Ball Z Kai too. Yeah, um, I don't tell Dale Kelly this, but I prefer your narration 
much more. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. At the beginning, it, it, it was what we call the industry of voice match, which is pretty much just doing an impression of, um, but I noticed that I kind of fell into my own thing after a while and they, they were cool with that. It's like, Oh, sweet. And then Kai came along. I was on the verge of moving to uh, LA in like 2005. So they said, well, okay, it's going to cost too much for you to fly out every week to record. And Kai is a different, it's kind of its own thing. Like every dragon ball saga has its own narrator. So they viewed it that way, even though I said, Kai is just Z, but that's just me. Um, so yeah, I got to keep Gohan and Ox King. Uh, I don't know if PyCon showed up in that or not. West kind PyCon. They were no, the they original. didn't. No, that was but filler. In the original. That was filler. So yeah, it went by the wayside. And what's ironic is so many fans say they actually prefer the uncut with all the filler because it's probably what they watched first. So there's a nostalgia element there. Right. Right. <laughs> um, if you ask the cast though, the cast probably feels like I do, where it's like, we're much more experienced actors. So we were able to take a more faithful script. And I know we felt more comfortable in the skins of our characters. That sounded creepy, but okay. <laughs> to to uh, the show practically directed itself, even though we were directed a lot of times by uh, Raleigh Pickens, who directed uh, Super and uh, Chris Sabat as well. He's like, you guys could just pretty much coast on autopilot. You guys have been these characters for years. And so I'll step in if I really need to, but <laughs> we'll just do it line by line and rock and roll, make it, make it yours. You know, best it's like, wow, that's cool. So it's nice to have that trust from the directing side. It's like, I've been in this character. I know he wouldn't call Goku father. He calls him dad, you know? Or, so sometimes the script would, or dad, daddy, whatever, you know, you, you pick things like, I don't think he would say it this way. It's like, all right, well, let's say it your way. And if it can fit the, the lip sync, we'll rock and roll with it. So that's pretty much how the over 9,000 thing stuck around. Which is weird. I don't know why they changed it to nine when the original was eight. It's not like a different mm -hmm. syllable. It's just, it's just still one syllable. <laughs> I, from what uh, Peter Kalamis told me when I interviewed yeah. him, he said that it was just a translation error. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and they just stuck with it because at the time they said that they were running with Mega Man at the time and they were running with the music from the Mega Man series. So, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm not a great fan of Kai. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I like parts of Super. Yeah. And um, I do enjoy all the movies. All the movies are great. They are fun. They are fun. And you know, they're, I guess they're in their own timeline, right? They're not canon, quote unquote, I guess. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see where the next movie goes. You know, I, I saw Gohan in that trailer. So like, hmm, will he actually show up this time and do some good and not get punched once? And then he's out and he's just going to go home and teach again or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe great Saiyan man will make an appearance. He is a superhero and he wasn't in this, in the trailer. So I wonder, I wonder, I noticed they I like know. to do surprises uh, in with trailers and movies and stuff. It's like, wait a minute. No, no, maybe sell a comeback. <laughs> See at this point, the cast is just in, in the same boat as all the fans around the world. We don't know. We haven't seen a script. We have not heard from Toye. There's nothing going on. I know in like a month or so, the Japanese one is going to premiere and we're told it will come to theaters or will get released anyway you know, this summer. But that could be a tricky trope. It's like, uh, is it going to be subtitled in America or can they offer both? You know, because you know, it does really well. And of course, any Dragon Ball movie is going to just do bonkers box office. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of the newer movies. I'm not a big fan of Battle of the Gods or the new Broly movie or stuff like okay. that. But I will say that lately you guys have been getting them out around the same time, you know, during the dub frame and the Japanese releases around the same time. So, you know, yeah. I'm all game. That's all, that's all up to Toye, you know, uh, I think. One was a year off. The next one was six months off. The next one may have been three. It's like, God, wouldn't it be nice if Toye would be cool with us doing it simultaneously? But 
I, at this point, I don't think it can, <laughs> you know, it's, for production schedules, you know, it takes time to get everyone recorded and mixed and approved and, and all that. So I don't see why a dub wouldn't happen. I just don't know the timeline uh, or turnaround for that yet. So uh, hopefully we'll find out soon. Oh yeah. I think it's going to be a decent movie at least. <laughs> I hope so. And if anything, maybe it'll lead into more series. I honestly thought that it would just be movies from here on out because doing a movie is easier than a TV show. But, you know, people will oh, yeah. be there. We've, they've proven they will come to the theater and they will watch the show. So, yeah, either way it works for DBZ fans. It's just <laughs> how it's all presented out there. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have any favorite Gohan lines? Yeah, I love the one that I just quote all the time. Fight you? No, I want to kill you. Because it's like, he is a supreme badass right then and there. And, you know, he has been, he he had his wings chopped off pretty much during that boo fight. You thought it was going somewhere. And I think Akira Toriyama said, yeah, originally I wanted this to be Gohan's story, but I decided, you know, he's not ready. We'll just make it Goku. It's like, come on, man. I remember watching it as a kid. I'm like, Gohan's going to beat Boo. It's going to be his great comeback art from Cell. And it's like, nah, nah, he's just going to get a butt kicking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been that way for a long time. And the fans say, don't you, don't you feel bad that Gohan's just been like that? And I say, yeah, I really hope that they make Gohan great again in the future. And if the movie is in the indication, I mean, he is dressed in the same outfit when he fought Cell. So hopefully even though this isn't Cell or Frieza or any of the, the, the big villains, it doesn't seem to be anyway. Maybe it's a start of something good for Gohan, because how many Super Saiyan forms can Goku have, you know? Well, we got to get the Super Saiyan purple. Yeah, or plaid or fuchsia or, you know, sepia. Or Super Saiyan bald. <sighs> That's right. That's the right. John Locke version. Yeah, because seriously, man, the it, it's so powerful, it killed the follicles up here. The hair it, can't grow. It's a it, whole it, uh, Napa it thing. burns it all off, you know? It's just that powerful. But <laughs> this imminent fire aura or something. Yeah, if anything, it'll, it'll turn your goatee gray. I mean, it's already gray. It would turn the goatee blonde. <laughs> and, and maybe it could just, like, grow further, you know? Yeah, yeah. A mullet goatee. Yeah, epic. Or it turns into this huge beard like ZZ Top or Gandalf yeah. or something. <laughs> you know, like. uh, now, now I'm going to talk about an anime that you probably don't remember at all. Monster. Monster. I remember recording it. I never get, did get around to seeing it. So I played a couple of, uh, couple of uh, I guess, story arcs. I guess a couple guys. Was I a cop? And then maybe a bad guy in another one? Actually, you were two characters. One, he was not really a cop. He was like a newspaper publicist. Oh, okay. And his wife wanted him to quit smoking. And then he gets brutally murdered. Oh, okay. So I'm a victim. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then the other one is a lawyer. And he actually stays alive. Um, his father was um, accused of being a spy or something. Yeah. It, and it's a shame because he was actually one of my favorite characters out of the series. I'm going to be doing some monster content on my channel. So, oh, cool. That's why I'm going to be talking about it. <laughs> yeah, that was a favorite. show that that show did a lot better than I thought it would. I mean, I knew a uh, benchmark of, of popularity is when you see it on the shelf at Walmart. And I did. I mean, I know they didn't release the entire series on DVD, but at least the first arc is like, oh, wow, cool. It, it, it's got an Australian release, which I own. <laughs> oh, do you? You got a region free free player? Oh, yes, I do. Well, that was the entire reason I bought the region free player uh, because I wanted to watch Monster, and I am one of those physical media nuts. I would I have to own everything on DVD or Blu-ray. And honestly, those are where to get all the cool extras. You know, the art books, the soundtracks, and even commentary tracks or cut scenes. Cause if you buy it digitally or stream it digitally, it, it almost never seems to have any extra features. Oh, it's just there. Yeah. But, it's just there. So, I mean, if monster got a sequel, would you ever come back for it? 
Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Cause again, I I'm happy to, to return to anything that they would have me back on if they want to throw me auditions, you know, for whatever project for, for anything, you know, this is what I do for a living. You know um, I've worked with a lot of studios through the years and have developed some, some great relationships with all the uh, directors, many of whom are also voice actors. So we've got this nice little tight knit community out there. And, you know, it's, it's been interesting during the pandemic because we've all had to switch to recording from home, which I'm spoiled by. I love it. I go record about 30 feet away in my walk-in closet and it's like, ah, oh, it's perfect. I love this. Pants are optional. Yes. <laughs> That's the American dream. It really is. You know, working from home, being your own boss, and if you can make a living doing something you love, man, that is, that is pinnacle. That is that is the way to go. Completely, fully agree. Is there any other characters that like ever hurt your voice, hurt your throat? It's not necessarily characters. It's what I'm doing with the characters. So I've, I've done a lot of screaming and tearing my throat apart as Ryu in Street Fighter, but I've also done that as background soldiers in Titanfall. A lot of RPGs have a lot of screaming in them. So I have a lot of bit parts and fight scenes and usually they'll record the dialogue first thank god and then they get to the screamy stuff which you know you have to have your own little top secret toolbox it's not so much top secret anymore you need your hot tea and you need your throat lozenges and chinese cough syrup is a miracle oh my god it's got to be chinese cough syrup because that actually coats your vocal cords and it helps you maintain your voice through that session and there's people that can do you know four hours without k- killing their voice, like D. Bradley Baker or Frank Welker. But anyone else starts doing creature noises or or screaming, you, you gotta you gotta protect the tool of your trade, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, Frank Welker's inhuman. I mean, I'm I'm just saying. I think he's more than one person. <laughs> I think so too. And there's a movement to get him a Hollywood Walk of Fame, a star on the Walk of Fame. And I hope that happens. He's been turned yeah. down before, but I mean. Hey, if Who Mark Hamill could get one, I think he should get one too. I think I think so. I, I think hopefully as technology gets better and everything and social media, obviously, movie studios, TV studios, any sort of studio producing content has that one-on-one relationship pretty much with, with their online fandom and community, and they can see what they want. So when someone says, hey, don't recast this character, let's bring in the original voice. And you've seen these nightmare situations before where Metal Gear Solid, they tossed away David Hayter and brought in Kiefer Sutherland. I I don't know why. It's like, why spend millions of dollars on a celebrity when money is everything and they get tight and they start cutting corners and it's like they balk whenever actors want to get more money. It's like, God, you throw money at the celebs. It's a payday for them. It's nothing to them. They're not passionate. And then you guys put out the games and you don't even put their names on there. It's not a selling point like a movie poster or a video box. You know, it's like, hey, you're a, you know this 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 big movie star, Gary Oldman or whatever's in Call of Duty. No, not a, not a single mention. We only know because we'll read reviews or something on IGN. It's like, oh yeah, so and so's in this game. Most gamers they could care less. They just want a good game. And if they can bring the professionals who do this for a living and help enhance the gameplay. You know, and, and not just cash the check for some some you know rich celeb who's not even really acting; they're just playing themselves. I mean, come on. I, I think something like that happened in The Force Awakens with James Arnold Taylor. He originally recorded dialogue for his scenes with uh, Obi Wan yeah. when they were going on in uh, Ray's head. I guess I, I don't yeah. watch the sequels that often, but yeah. then they canned his lines just to do Ewan McGregor's. <laughs> yeah, so they paid him, and believe me, I, I don't know how much he got paid to do that, but I guarantee Ewan McGregor got way more money, and I think studios just see dollar signs. It's like, I, we'll spend it. It's okay. It's like, but in the mix, you barely hear it anyway. It might as well have been, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> see, that's why I love the DBZ game so much, because they actually kept you guys intact. Yes. Yes, they did. And I'm so thankful. So in between series and movies, there has been a game pretty much every year and DLC for the last ones 
for the past several years. And it's, it's great that the fandom still supports it and we'll keep blowing our voices out for it as they continue to, to go into the future. You know, was there ever a Gohan yell that put your voice out of whack? Uh, one came close when he turns super Saiyan two in the other world tournament. That's my favorite scene of Gohan in the show is, is basically him, you know, and everyone's just like, what they're blown away. He's wearing Saiyan man's outfit, but he yeah. goes super Saiyan. The eyes just go back in his head. You just see the whites of his eyes and they're like, ah, you know, it's almost 10 seconds long. And I had to do it again on Kai years Ooh. later. And I was concerned. It's like, am I going to be able to do this? Luckily, it took a deep enough breath. I did it in like two takes. And one was just a backup. You know, we always try to get the good take and then a backup just in case. It's called an alt or alternate. And we'll do that. And same thing with like censored shows. You know, they'll do a, what's called a TV edit. You know, you'll say darn instead of damn or hell and do all that. It's like, why does Gohan have to say darn all the time? He's so good. <laughs> you know? What do you think of uh, the ocean dub teen or adult Gohan, Brad Swale? Brad's incredible, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he was able to make his own and they didn't put, I was like, well, we're going to sound like the funny people and the funny people. The mandate was when they first brought it to Texas, it's like, we need to sound like the Canadian. It's like, but let people make it their own. And that's great. And that's, that's what Brad's done. Not only is he an awesomely cool person, Super, super talented. And I, I have respected the guy and looked up to his work for years, probably even before I got into it. I remember hearing him as Zax in Gundam Wing. I thought, that's that's smooth. That's suave. That's a good sound. And, you know, you know, Brian Drummond is another one I've always looked up to. Oh, hearing yeah. his Vegeta, that was the Vegeta I'm used to hearing, even though Sabbath's great and he's made it his own through all the years. But that's what I heard first. And Scott McNeil was Piccolo. It's like, mm. those <sighs> those three movies that were dubbed by Ocean yeah. that are uncut. I mean, yeah. those are my favorite movies. <laughs> Altriamite and Dead Zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones I don't have with your guys' dub on them. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, I totally get why people, uh, they have a preference. You know, whatever they see first. Or whatever that's just in their head and yeah that's cool because there's an audience for everything out there sadly that uh brian's version of the is the only one i can do <laughs> <laughs> you know fair enough uh, fair enough i mean I, I remember as a kid i was playing dragon ball z on the playground and i do vegeta's voice and i was the only one that knew that version because toonami started cutting that version out i was like it's over nine thousand <laughs> that's right vegeta prince of all saiyans you know like yeah yeah there's 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 just something about it it's really edgy and creepy and cool and yeah, he sounds like uh an evil scientist about ready just to destroy the world that's yes fuck it <laughs> oh yeah and uh now i do love the way you play Great say, man, though. I've got to say, some of the lines got me laughing as a kid. Well, that's thanks to the the awesome writing team. God, I want to say Terry Clausen, who who also scripted a lot of the Canadian dub scripts. I, I think Barry Watson, too. Or? Barry Watson. He directed some episodes, too, whenever Sabbath couldn't and, and everything. Yeah, Barry was, was definitely heavily involved in the production side as well. And yeah, those, those lines. I had so much fun, even though you know, uh, there's a lot of fans that think he's pretty much Jar Jar Binks for the Dragon Ball universe. I love it. God, I had so much fun getting to play this idiotic, nerdy person who, who just wants to sound like an old game show host. Like, oh, put that down, criminal. Have a justice sandwich. You know, that's just fun. I mean, uh, I can't remember exactly which line is my favorite, but uh, it was when he was on the roof. And uh, the one girl, Stephanie does his voice, does her voice, which yeah. I thought was great because it was like the young Gohan with the older Gohan mm -hmm. and uh, something about his underwear. Or something. It just got me laughing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like he seriously thinks that he looks awesome in, the, in that outfit. Like, hey, I'm trying here. You know, this is this is awesome. Quit laughing. But Obviously, yeah. 
obviously a Power Rangers reference. I mean, obviously, obviously. Which, and I have seen so many cosplayers just knock it out of the park with uh, with that. And I have signed many a pop figure for Great Saiyan Man. So he's got a lot of love in the fandom after all. Do you prefer with the helmet or without the helmet? You know, where he's wearing the bandages on his head. I like the helmet. I like the <laughs> helmet better. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I could just go into deep detail. And the funny thing is, Dragon Ball Z is not your only narrating uh tool there you also narrated for a little bit of a naruto special called naruto rock lee and his ninja pals i did boy i played multiple characters in that <laughs> i think you were gara in that yeah um, you were Kakashi, gara, maybe kiba <laughs> definitely kiba well yeah you're always kiba See, always who, who doesn't love kiba he's one of the most underrated characters and it was actually that when I was a kid, when I watched Naruto and I realized, why does Kiba sound so familiar? There's something <laughs> about his voice. <laughs> yeah. Cause I have one teenage voice and it's pretty much my own. <laughs> I kept just listening and listening. And then when the credits would roll on screen, because I still have my DVDs of that. And I was about 15. I said, Kyle, he bear. I know that name. I said, I know that name. And then that year, I happened to buy the Orange Brick sets. Oh, cool. And I was watching it, and uh, they were scrolling the names up of that. I was like, oh, well, wait, they got Naruto and my Dragon Ball here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those very, very blessed few people that, it got, that gets to say that I've been in a huge part, or maybe even a small part, of all these huge franchises. I mean, I've been... You know, a lot of dads and villain of the week on Sailor Moon, even it's like I, I've been in Gundam shows. I've been in, you know, Full Metal Alchemist and you know, Bleach, Naruto, uh, Street Fighter, just these epic properties, man. And it just blows my mind that uh, I have that opportunity to do that. How, how do you normally feel when, like, say someone my age or maybe even younger always comes up and says, you've been a big piece of my childhood? That means a lot. I mean, initially, I think it made me just feel old, but I started to rethink it. I started to rethink it. It's like so many people will walk up to like Peter Cullen and Frank Welker. It's like, you're the voice of my childhood. It's like, or Kevin Conroy, mm -hmm. the ultimate Batman right there. And I've met him too. It's like, oh my God, I wasn't a child when I watched it. I'm because I'm 52 this year, but uh, <laughs> I was in college watching the animated series. And golly, it's just when. You can tell it's heartfelt, and I didn't even think at the time when I was recording those initial DBZ episodes that I would be talking to generations years later, people who grew up on that and are now having their own families and raising their kids watching. It's like, here, this is something I watched when I was a kid, and they're bringing, it's a whole family affair. They're bringing their kids, and the parents are cosplaying. It's, it's really, really cool to see. So I find it totally flattering. It's really, really nice. Uh, me, I mean, now that you bring up Batman, because you probably already know who my favorite is, Michael Keaton. I understand that. I understand that. Now we're going to get in a Batman war. <laughs> no, I think, uh, well, maybe not George Clooney, but I think everyone kind of brought their own little spin. <laughs> and, not, you George know, <laughs> not George Clooney. And George Clooney is an awesome actor. He's not but Batman. He but he's not Batman and he will admit that it's like, he apologizes for that movie, but yeah, I, I mean, golly. Yeah. I didn't, I wasn't sure Michael Keaton could do it. Cause at that time I knew him from comedies, Beetlejuice and other things. It's like, he's not going to, he did great. And I learned then don't be scared of casting choices. Heath Ledger, like he's going to be better than Jack Nicholson. Well, a lot of people still favor Jack Nicholson, but I say it's just a different approach completely different you know sticking caesar romero from the original tv series or you know for me my first batman was adam west watching that goofy campy show in the 60s so it was really a shock to the system to see tim burton's really dark comically dark but but that take on batman but i'm as excited as anyone to hear michael keaton's coming back to the role in this you know flash movie and and everything so yeah that's cool you know who i think they should get back to the role max shrek christopher walken I mean, come on. That's true. 
you know, even though he's older, he's, he's still him with the, with the pauses and everything. It's great. I actually, I actually survived the electric kiss from Catwoman. Yes. <laughs> True facts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I guess, you know, to you, Batman was like the show, I guess to me, Dragon Ball Z was the show to me. I mean, it was what launched me into anime. I mean, it, it just, mm. Mm, I mean, it was just like the hugest thing for me. I mean, I've, <laughs> you've probably seen it all over my Twitter and I'll tag you once in a while. And it's sure. Yeah, man, I, I, I've been watching anime since I was growing up in the seventies, watching battle of the planets and, um, star blazers you know they they basically brought it over because star wars became such a hit in 77 that they started licensing shows from across and then having them dub it, dubbed and i didn't know that the word anime didn't exist it was just cartoons you know and they came over they were dubbed and um and golly through the 80s i was watching robo robotech and voltron and you just seen the evolution of things from it going to a, like a kind of a tacky racist term like japanimation to anime and that's stuck for decades luckily and it's just a true uh, amazing art form that you see blending into pop culture like you see an anime show of shorts for star wars i never thought that the two would meet i mean you see batman too there's there was an, a, an anime anthology with gotham knight i guess it was called or uh it's it's really really profoundly cool that that form of artwork and storytelling has a global appeal and it's bigger than ever now so i think one of my biggest questions is and this comes to a conversation we were having earlier mm -hmm. have you ever narrated anybody at conventions oh all the time i get those on cameo people will book cameo custom <laughs> video messages and they'll say hey narrate my birthday or, you know, say my name's Joey, like next time on Dragon Ball Z, Joey goes Super Saiyan. So it's then, like cameo is the next best thing to if you can't make it to a con, you know, it's like, hey, I'm online. Cameo.com slash Kylie Bear. Woo. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll put a link for that in my description. Oh, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, also, uh, do you remember narrating me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I have narrated a lot of people. They'll They'll come and. They, they've had me even help with a couple of marriage proposals. You know, uh, <laughs> I had to like be the narrator for one guy who was dressed as say a man. And then his fiance was say a girl, I guess. And oh, yeah. I had to sound epic. And then I had to be like, calm enough from Gurren Lagann for a Kamina who wanted to get engaged to his girlfriend dressed as Yoko. And I was like, this is cool. Never thought this would happen. So uh, what's your opinion on playing Aizen? Eisen, uh, I wish he had more screen time. It's like they talk about him more and he sits around planning and scheming than he actually does anything else. It's like he's, he's doing all this behind the scenes, like pay no attention, but the man behind the curtain, well, the man behind the curtain is this epically cool, super calm villain who never really loses his cool. I mean, he does a little bit when he changes into butterflies and then white Deadpool, but <laughs> he has these different looks about him. Uh, and you know hopefully they'll approach the dub cast hopefully they'll have a dub for this final arc that's that's debuting this year in japan yeah i'm hoping you come back for that role because you kind of made aizen really evil sounding i guess or well thank you thank uh, you yeah I, I read that now that was inspired by a computer ai voice in this old movie this old sci-fi classic called 2001 a space odyssey there's this computer and he's called hal hal 9000 speaking of over 9000 and he's just friendly and quirky and sort of mysterious sounding. He sounds nice, but also sort of creepy. And that's what I based my audition on. And luckily it sounded like what they were doing in the Japanese version too. And Viz was like, yeah, you're our guy. Like, sweet. Awesome. Uh, I actually really like the differences that you made for his voice. Uh, in the very first part where he's got his hair down, and his glasses yeah. on, mm -hmm. he seems like a caring, nurturing guy. And then, in the other round, he's like, just don't mess with this dude. He will kill you. That's right. He's sitting on his pimp throne. He's rocking that mullet. You know, <laughs> he's, he messed with this guy. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, uh, when uh, uh, I was actually researching, you know, before I interviewed, I seen a video where you narrated the Nostalgia Critic. Do you remember that? I do. I do. We were guests at MatsuriCon in Columbus, <laughs> Ohio. And he said, I got an idea for a, a bit. You up for it? I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, dude. I'm a fan of his stuff. It's great. Doug's, Doug's hilarious and really funny. It's like, just follow me around. You can say what you want. Just like, <laughs> so I had to improvise a lot of that stuff. When I was watching that, I was like, he did that to me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And did you get that idea from watching his? Yeah, I was like, no, no, actually, uh, I had met you before that video came out. Oh, okay. And yeah, um, the story, uh, from what I remember, I was walking past you and you're like, hello, cosplayer. And I was like, you're the narrator from DBZ. And it's like, oh, yeah, I am. And I said, could you narrate him for me just, just for a minute? And it's like, what's your name? You smiled real big. And I said, Tim. For about five minutes, he followed me around. I was like, Tim is walking around. He's wearing his white hair wig. He's dressed as vicious from Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> it's like, is it safe to go to the bathroom? Can he get out of his cosplay enough to actually go to the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, that That's fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it left an impression on me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, this guy is cool, but he's trying to be malicious at the same time, I think. Am I? Am I? I'm being all trolly McTrollerson. Yes. Before trolling was a cool thing, there was kind yes. of there. There were, there were voice actors that were preying on unsuspecting fans, just blowing their mind with voices and then suddenly saying, hey, what are you trying to say? He's insulting me. Or is he? No, this is so cool because he's doing the voice. <laughs> it, it, you get into one of those fanboy moments. And you're like, I don't know what to think, but it's awesome at the same time. But is he being mean? No, no, there, there's no malicious intent I, whatsoever. I <laughs> it was a lot of fun. My friend and I were there and he was like, dude, dude, that's, that's the narrator. He's following you. Yes. And he's only following me. <laughs> Don't be nervous. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've got to say thanks so much for coming on. It's been an honor. Absolutely, man. I'm happy to do so. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, talk with you and your viewers. Oh, yes. What little I have, but they're there. <laughs> that's okay, man. We live in an age where anyone can be a creator. And I think that's exciting and motivating. I mean, there's so much out there. It's hard to sift through through all the noise to find find your tribe and everything. But I think it's great when people just get inspired. It's like, I want to voice act in cartoons. Like, or I'll just make one on YouTube. It's like, I want to be the next Seth MacFarlane. Why not? What's stopping you? You know, because those Hollywood studios, they're, they're trolling YouTube. They're finding the next creators. Like, hey, there's a guy that made Luke Skywalker look better than we did for The Mandalorian. <laughs> Hire him. And they did. <laughs> all right is there anything you want to say before i close out yeah yeah if you guys are interested i host a podcast all by my lonesome it's me uh doing geek news and i talk to myself in multiple character voices not the ones i'm known for because i would get sued probably <laughs> <laughs> i create my own original characters i've got aliens i've got a conspiracy theorist i've got a karen i just pitch my voice up make it sound like a mad soccer mom uh, and all these different characters that will come in and interact with me on the show. It's called the intergalactic boom box. Just search that the intergalactic boom box, anywhere you listen to podcasts, give a thumbs up and like, and spread the word if you like it. Or check the link in my description. Yeah, do that. Hit the link in the show notes. And now to close out. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I bear the narrator from dragon ball Z. And you are watching Mr. Tim. If you like what you hear and see, make sure to subscribe, follow, ding that bell so you get notifications every time there's a new Mr. Tim episode. Listen hard and enjoy.